Hey guys, I'm doing this. Kevin Tech here bringing another video on information technology. I hope you're having a good day. Happy Saturday. And today I want to go over Linux Fundamentals Part 3. Obviously, you know me, trying to know what to do. Rate, comment, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. Really appreciate it. So today we're going to go over some Linux Fundamentals Part 3. This is the last series of the Try Hack Me Room. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. It should be a quick video. It shouldn't be complicated. So let's go over this real quick. And then we'll wrap it up with um, other stuff. All right. Let me share my screen real quick. All right. Screen one. So today... And I'm gonna exit out this. I'm gonna exit out of this split room because I was having I was having a bunch of issues, but now I got the got it to work. So we're gonna go over Linux fundamentals part three. I'm gonna like just breeze through it. Um, and if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, so welcome to part three in the finale of Linux fundamentals module. So far throughout the series, you've gone hands on on some fundamental concepts. You use some important commands. The room is going to showcase some useful utilities applications that you likely use day to day. You're going to advance your Linux full skills by learning about automation, package management, service, and application logging. So you don't got to do anything for this one. The, the important one is going to be task two, which is, I'm not sure if you guys remember on my previous video, I SSH to an IP address. Here we're going to SSH to 10.10.42.196. So we're going to deploy the try hack me attack box. It's already deployed as you, you saw on my, on my screen, it was open already. And then we're going to use the following credentials. So we're going to do 10.10.42.196. And it's going to ask you like, did you, did you deploy successfully? I did already. And I'm going to show you how I did that. So what I'm going to do is, not to waste any of your time, I'm going to go to the, a brand new one, right? And I have my notes right here. So if you want to SSH to something, you're going to do SSH, uh, try hack me at 10.10.42.196. It's going to ask for the password. The password is try hack me. And I am successfully in the box. Uh, and that's it. So that should be done. This, this task two is done. Let's go to task three. And remember, we talked we talked about um, echo. There is the echo command you can run, but they said they said there's a more effective way using nano. So nano, nano, and then there's vim as well. So you could create a file, you could create an edited file using nano. So it says you're uh, using nano file name, replacing file name with the name of the file you wish to edit. So I'm gonna copy that. So I'm gonna do nano. Uh, my file, this is the created file, right? And then here you can edit the file. You can replace it. You could read it. You could justify it. And we're going to get out of the screen. We're going to do Control X. And then we're going to do LS. And then you can see here that we have a file called My File. So that's that's created in here. I just wanted to create it just because that's what they did. And you can modify it as well if you want to. I'm not going to modify it. It tells you here how to modify it. Um, and then that's it. And it says you could search for text, copy, paste, jump into a line number, find out what line number you are on, et cetera, et cetera. And then if you want to do Vim, you, there is a room for Vim and try hack me. We're not going to go over that today. But here it says showcase, showcase in Vim if you wish to learn more about this. So here it says here, create a file using Nano. I did. I created a Nano in my file. And it says here, um, let's figure out what is task three. So remember, we talked about figuring out what is what is figuring things out. So we're not going to use cat. We're going to use nano, and nano is going to tell us what's task three. So what we're going to do is we're going to type nano task three, and this is right there. That's, that's the first answer to the first flag on this question, which is THM text editor. Then you do control X, and you should be able to get out of that screen. So now we're going to move on to task four. Task four is a little more complicated. It gets a little confusing, but we have W get. Um, w get, and we also have uh, C -A -S -S -C -P which is uh, so you're, so you're really copying files. Um, and then I'm not going to go over this, but basically they, they show you how to do it. So it's, they're doing SCP important.txt that you want to at the IP address. So they're basically, they're basically running the SCP command with this information that's provided here. This is, this is an example. Uh, and then same thing, uh, they're going to reverse the layout SCP and they use ACP uh, space Ubuntu. Um, and then here is that information. What we care about here is wget because we're going to run wget uh, and we're going to run python3 space minus m and http dot server. So I already ran this command already uh, on, on my, that's why I have too many, that's why I have three tabs open because I already ran this command already, but I, I wanted to keep it open just to show you because I was having a bunch of issues earlier. I had to terminate the whole, terminate the whole terminal. <laughs> that makes sense because it's not running correctly. So here, let's see, w get to download the file using the computer's IP address and the name of the file. So this is w get ACCP, and it gives you a bunch of information about it. 
And then and then uh, after that, you run Python and HTTP, and you get more information about it. So here it is. So ensure you're connected to the deploy instance 10.10.42.196. You know, I, I already know I'm on the right machine because if you scroll all the way up, I'm on 10.10.42.196. Um, you could use the Python 3 HTTP server module to, to start a web server in the home directory, which is what we're going to do now. So I'm going to do Python space M HTTP server. It's going to connect to that. So give that a second. And that was the issue I was having earlier, where this does this does not want to work for the deal life of me for some reason. So like if I go and we go to this one real quick, if I go and do it in here, let me see here. That actually worked. See how I ran it in here? It's like a bug. It's not working for some reason. It works here. So this is already in use. Now if I run the 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 information they want me to run, which is W uh W get and then do 10. Download the file 10 10. 10. 10. 426 So if I copy and paste, we're gonna do W get and then the, the information there is flag is dot flag dot text dot four. So that's the information. Now if I want to find out what's at what's the actual contents of this flag file, you're gonna do cat, we're gonna do dot flag dot text dot four. And then that's how I got my um that's how I, I got this flag right here, which is THMW get web server. And then if you want to get out of this, if you want to get out of this, you do control C to stop the HTTP server module once you're finished, which I don't need to do that because I'm I already exit out of it. So we're good to go after that. And that's how I got the answer for this one. Hopefully that makes sense. So if you run W get W get downloads the file using the computer IP address and the name of the file. That's basically what this is. So we're going to go to task four or task five. And then this, I, I, this, I didn't even know that you're able to check like processes or CPUs by running PS. So you run PS, it actually gives you the PID, which is 1802, uh, 1829. But then I didn't know that if you, I didn't know that, that this, ex, this PS space AUX existed, which basically you could run P, PS space AUX. And then it gives you more information on it. And then if you go, if you go all the way, all the way up, we're gonna scroll all the way up. It has you the CPU, the memory. This is like this is like the terminal for um this is a activity monitor for uh Mac. Almost similar to that, actually. It's almost similar to the task manager too. When you look at it, you go to the details, it's almost the same, like literally, it's almost the same thing. Like it's crazy, like. It reminds me of Windows. See how Windows has all this information. So it's pretty cool. So, and then here it says you could you could check the commands, you could check the CPU, the memory, and then you could kill something. If you want to kill a process, you can kill a process. So you do kill and then the name of the process 1337. So like here, the process name is 100. Here we have process names as well. We could kill them if we like. That's entirely up to us. So I didn't even, you could kill, P, you could kill PID 1802. By typing the kill command, and then there is sig term which kills the process but allow allows it to do some cleanup tasks beforehand. And sig kill kills the process, doesn't do any cleanup after the fact. And then sig stop stops and suspends a process. So I didn't know that existed. That's pretty cool. And have pid and in the command, and you have sim uh, sim md uh, and getting process to start on boot. You have sim stl. And then you have sim to start a process, start up a process, sim start Apache 2, which is kind of cool. And then you do four options, which sim CTL. Uh, and yeah, that's it. It's very interesting. And then they have echo. I didn't know echo existed. And then you have control plus C. And this actually keyboard bracket is effective way of pausing the execution of a script. Uh, and it stops it. So you already stops it right here. And you have control plus Z. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. So I, and, and then there's FG. You can see the FG command is being used to bring the background process back into use on the terminal where the output of the script now returns to us. Yeah. So that's that's basically what this is. And then um a little bit of questions now. If you were to launch a process where the pre where the previous ID was 300, what would be the ID of the new process? It'll be 301. So that's the answer to that one. 
on this is this is based on um sim term this is the if you go all the way up and read the read the terminology it says kill the process but allow me to do some cleanup that would be sim term that's how i got this answer hopefully that makes sense and it says locate the process is running on deploy instance 10.10.42.1 so what i did was i ran um i ran ps ps uh, uh space aux pipe les i had to i had to run a ps space aux pipe ls and then it says here what can i use to stop the service remember they, that question is right there or the answer is right there so if you go up if you go up service to start to stop the service would be sim s y s a e m c t l and then you have the stop option so stop my service and then sim e n c t l enable my service and then the command you to, to bring a previous background process back to foreign ground is fg so if you go up here since the command being used to bring back process back to the terminal would be fg that's how i got that answer so we're going to go to the last one um and it says here you could run cron tab minus e to edit your cron tab and basically cron tab process uh and then cron tab process so if we run let me open let me exit out of this there we go so we could run uh Cron tab minus E. And then here's the information. If you scroll all the way down, we're going to scroll all the way down. You get something called reboot verb slash out process, SH. And that's actually part of the questions here. So it says, yeah, what is being run on my IP address is at reboot. And that's how I got that answer. Hopefully that makes sense. And if I want to get out of this, it's control X again. And now we're back on the screen again. And here you have uh, maintaining your package management. So you have LS and LS is to show packages. So we have LS. Here's task three. Um, and then you could add a repository. Uh, you could you could add a repository. The apt command is part of the package management software is named app. App contains a whole suite of tools that allows you to manage the package and sources of your software to install or remove software at the same time. Uh, so you add minus app re repository. It is traced above. We're going to walk through adding or removing repository. You can install software through use of package in installer using DPKG. App means that whenever we update a system, the repository contains the pieces of that software that we add to get checks for updates. Let's go and download the GP key using the app key to trust it. So this is an example of how to install it, how to set it up. You don't got to do anything here. And then that's it. That's it for that one. And then this one, I have the answer right here. What is the IP address of the users who will visit the site? So here is briefly touch log files, links fundamentals part three, part one, sorry. And then here you have an Apache web server, logs for failed band service, which is used to monitor attempt brute forces. And then here you have Apache two, and then the logs right there. These services and logs and monitoring your system allow developers and ministers to diagnose performance. For example, do two types of log files below that are interest that are of interest: the access log and error log. These are the core so log files that store uh, information about the OS is running itself and the actions performed by the users, such as authentication attempts. So look for Apache two logs on the deployed Linux machine. So here we're going to do uh, CD. And we're gonna do CD Apache 2. Uh, and then we're gonna run LS. And then we see that there's a bunch of files in there. Uh, and then we're gonna run LS space minus L. Give you a bunch of files in there. And then we're gonna run less access log dot one. So let's access. I spelled it wrong. And then that's how we got cats and dogs. As you see right there is uh, what file did you, did, what file did they access? And it says here, cats and dogs that JPEG or JPG basically. And then you could just 
exit out of this and be back on the screen. And that's it. And that's how that that's how we got that answer. So again, I apologize to you guys. I was trying to get the machine to work. The browser was being done with me. I closed out and reopened. It closed everything. And then my IP address changed. So real brief to go over some stuff that we went over in the room. Um, I SSH to my machine uh, using S uh, SSH. Uh, I have the commands here. So I use SSH, try hack me uh, right here. And I put the IP address, but so it's not letting me I just copy and paste the wrong thing, but I, I SSH into it. Um, let me copy and paste real quick. Sorry about that. So copy and paste. SSH to 10.10.162.107, which I did that already. Uh, and then this is yes. Then this is try hack means the Try and hack me as the password, and I'm able to log in, and that's basically how I got in the system. And then to get this information, I ran nano. I'm typing for some dumb reason, not letting me type over here. I ran nano task three, which gave me that information. And a bunch of other stuff. Well, yeah, that's it. That's it for me. And that's it for this room. Again, I apologize. I'm having like stop sharing. I'm having some technical difficulties with the room. But try hack me needs to fix that. Really annoying. Uh, I I spent oh I spent over an hour just trying to do this room because I'm trying to share my screen and show some stuff that that, that you can barely see it on the screen on the terminal. So I had to stretch out the whole thing just so you could see the answers to the questions. But I'll edit this video and, and and I'll cut out some of the parts of the video. Anyway, with that being said, I hope you have a good day. I hope you have a good Saturday. Take care. Later. Bye.